Hello and welcome to episode 85 of Do More With Your Money. I am your host, TJ Van Gerben. On today's podcast, I'm going to talk to you about building for balance and sustainability. I would consider myself somebody who doesn't always build for balance and sustainability, especially when it's something that I'm passionate about. So, for example, creating my financial planning practice. I went all in and tried a bunch of different stuff and went extremely hard. But the problem was is that I got burnt out at various times, and I still get burnt out at various times. And so the thing that I've come to realize is that it's not just about the effort you put in. It has to be sustainable over a long time frame. So you don't want to go all in where you're doing something at a rate that is not sustainable. So it's like, let's say, talk, talking about going to the gym. You know, you can't go so hard at the gym that you're going to be so tired that you can't keep going for extended periods of time. And if you're not somebody who's used to going to the gym for that extended period of time, then you're going to get burnt out. And so what do we do is we try to build up towards that in a way that's sustainable. And we're we're constantly pushing the limits there, but we're not going so hard at it to start where we're going to burn ourselves out. And so this translates to me across a variety of different things, whether it's building a business, whether it's improving your health, improving your finances, and ultimately financial planning, because that's what this podcast is about, is financial planning. And so when you're doing something, you have to think about sustainability and balance. In my opinion, if you are in it for the long run, because if you build for sustainability and balance, once you achieve a certain goal or metric or lifestyle or net worth or whatever it is, you know what it took to get there and you did it in a way that was intentional and that was repeatable. And so the chances of you maintaining that are much higher than if you're doing something where maybe there's more luck involved or you're going all in and you're burning yourselves out. And so when you think about creating good habits, whether it's going to the gym, working out, eating well, or with your personal finances, Right. Think about something that's sustainable. So maybe you're working on paying down debt or increasing your net worth. Right. It's about building the habits of how much can I actually extract from my income and put towards, you know, various savings goals, whether it's working towards maxing out your 401k, IRA, building a dedicated cash reserve, paying down debt. Um, Maybe you want to explore alternative asset classes like cryptocurrency or things like that. You know, earn the ability to purchase these things where you can do it over long time frames and it's going to fit into the sustainability of your finances as opposed to going all in on something 100%. And, you know, now you have this behavioral psychological dilemma where you can't keep up with this level of attention or passion or speculation. <laughs> so for example, you know, I was talking to a friend over the weekend and he was telling me about his cryptocurrency and how you know he had hit very big on some kind of alternative type cryptocurrencies and you know was sitting on a pretty large position, especially relative to what he invested. And it's that it's great. It's an amazing thing. And listen, it's it's really hard to, you know, talk about outcomes and intention, skill versus luck, because he acknowledged it, it was a it was a luck based decision. But now it's about figuring out how to take that and transition to something that is sustainable. And it's really hard to go from that to sustainability when you're always looking for that next big purchase, big speculation. And so by having a framework for sustainability, for balance, you can give yourself that outlet to do that, but you're also building towards your vision for the lifestyle you're trying to build. Because to me, and this is just how I think about things, is it's not about accumulation. It's about accumulation to build towards a lifestyle. And so you have to have a vision for that lifestyle. Now, if you have no clue what the vision for that lifestyle is, then you, I guess, have more room to 
run wild and, and try different things. And it's not a bad thing to try different things. I'm just the kind of person where I want the odds to be in my favor. And I want to put myself in a position consistently where I intentionally did something that I had complete control over and that was not luck based. Because if it's not luck based, it's repeatable and it's sustainable. But I also want to enjoy myself in the present because, you know, there's this dilemma with time in the sense that we treat time differently, right? The future is not guaranteed, but we also need to maintain a long term perspective. We also don't want to just live in the short term because if we just live in the short term, then we will never set ourselves up for that long term sustainability. And so, how do you figure out how to, you know, find the right balance? That is the key is finding the right balance is mitigating the opportunity cost of basically not living for just today, but also not just living for tomorrow. And so again, it comes down to figuring out how to optimize your resources in a way where you don't feel like you're sacrificing too much in the short term, you're kind of optimizing for a level of spending that you feel comfortable with in the short term, but still allows you to sustainably invest, save, create this fortress, financial fortress over time in a way that you're not burning yourself out. And so (laughs) all of that is just a really convoluted way of saying, Whatever you're doing, do it for sustainability and do it for balance. And so whether you're in the business of content marketing, like I have to do content marketing, it's part of my business strategy. I don't pick up something anymore that I'm not willing to commit to in a sustainable way for a certain period of time, right? So if I if I start email marketing, I'm going to do it once a week in a way that's palatable to me, that I can provide value to the, the readers but not in a way that I'm going to burn myself out. Same with the podcast. I have come to learn I can only do one podcast episode a week because believe it or not, it is hard to get on here and do a monologue of something <laughs> that, you know, consistently, because, you know, you, you especially when I do it the way I do it, which is just one take and not much editing because, again, I just, I got other things that I'd like to focus on as well. <laughs> so it's about sustainability and balance within my content marketing strategy. Just like in my financial planning, I'm saving and investing each week to my solo 401k and my Roth IRA and my taxable account. And I'm just slowly increasing that as I go on, as my income increases, but also trying to balance reinvesting in my business where appropriate. So It's all of these different decisions. I just, I try not to get caught up in the short term, but focusing on what is sustainable long term, but I'm also not hating myself. (laughs) So that's all I have for you today. As always, if you have not joined the weekly email list, the sign up will be in the show notes. It's tips for pursuing financial independence. So each Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, I send three tips. The first one for pursuing financial independence. So things that you should be thinking about on an ongoing basis if you are passionate about pursuing financial independence. The second one is optimizing taxes. So things, areas where you can hopefully save taxes either in the short term or in the long term. And then lastly, equity compensation. If you do get compensated in equity, this is something to think about. If you don't, is pursuing that but also how can you take that equity compensation and maximize it? So I hope you have a great rest of your week and talk soon.